Monday is D-Day and no more plastic bags as from Tuesday. Let from the panel here. Let me start with you, Jim. Uh, according to NEMA and according to the government, we are ready and it looks like we'll never really be that ready. Uh, your comments on, uh, first of all, if we have prepared well enough as a country for the ban. I think generally, uh, as, as a people, we will never be ready. There's always the rush to do things in the last minute. And so uh, when you, we, we, even when we're doing digital migration, there's always the question of we are not trading a lot of litigation around it. But at the end of the day, when something has to be done, it ultimately has to be done. And we cannot uh, underestimate the importance of um, banning plastics and plastics bags particularly. Um, and so I think we are ready, NEMA is ready, and the factories that actually produce, the, that manufacture the plastic bags had notice in advance. So they actually, basically... I think this is the third time the government is trying to affect the ban. Exactly. So one of the things that ought to have happened in, in the factories is they ought to have been innovative enough to come up with products that are eco-friendly so that then you don't have the question of people saying that they will be running out of jobs because their companies have already become innovative to have eco-friendly bags that then they can take to the market. All right. Let me hear from you, uh, Brian. Okay. Uh... For there to be, for, the, for us to have a, a rise in something, we first of all have to have the demise of it. Now, the ban on the, that industry basically means that uh, Kenya wants to go green. And uh, I have no reservations whatsoever to the ban on the, uh, on the plastics and the total industry because uh, jobs will be. Some jobs will be lost, but other jobs will be created. What ought to have been done was that we ought to have prepared our people psychologically. You understand? Most people were never aware, or they were found unaware. As my friend said, that uh, people are, we are fond of the last of minute. Doing rush. things at the yeah, last yeah, minute. Yes. yes. So uh, we ought to have uh, taught our people, there ought to have been that education so that in the event that all these companies are coming down, the people are readily uh, prepared of the alternatives. Mm. But there's absolutely nothing wrong. We have to embrace change at some point mm. in time. And uh, Kenya is going green. If you visit Rwanda, Rwanda is very clean. So as a country, it has impact. Everything has the positive and the negative. And the negative. Yes. So we don't have to focus so much on the negative. Let us look on the positive of the effect that this, that this ban is going to have. Okay, uh, Evans, do you think people are well informed, especially on the bigger picture? Because you, if you listen to the mamas and the complaints, most are complaining that what am I going to carry my things with? What am I? It's very um, individual, very, uh, uh, I'd, I'd call it maybe selfish, as opposed to looking at the bigger picture of what the effect of carrying on with the plastics would be in the long term. Are people well informed in that regard? Michael, this is long overdue. As my colleagues have said, is that uh, we are going to join a league of countries like Rwanda. But I think also we still have the problem, which is very society, uh, society problem. Uh, if you look at, for example, the low, um, low income, uh, low earners, mamamboga, as you've put it, most of them, you see, rely on these uh, kind of uh, p p plastic bags. So how they will be able to invest in alternative uh, packaging is, is, is something we're going to, to wait and see. Because the cost implication also is there. Because you see, like, um, ordinarily when you go to any, any grocery, shop, especially the ones that are on the roadsides. Most of these mamambogas are usually, they're, they're very commonly using these plastic bags. So I don't know what they will opt to do. Maybe newspapers, which is also not, also very good in terms of uh, hygiene. Because, mm -hmm. these, you know, these are prints. So I think what needs to happen is that um, I think it will, we will get there when the right time. I'm, I'm sure the law will prevail. I think, as I said, NEMA is ready. The manufacturers will abide by the law. But I think at the societal level, I think we, there will still be a lot of problems in terms of people catching up and be able to, because it, it really has to take time. Even in Rwanda, it didn't just happen once. Mm. I think they really need to effect the law, but give some people, give people time to go through the transition inter until when we are able to fully adapt it. All right, Jim, it's, this is almost a culture change because, yeah. you know, these plastic bags literally are part of our lives. Yeah. Uh, one cannot imagine a time where you did not have a plastic bag and that is likely to change and alternatives of course were given and there was an exhibition at KICC yesterday uh, but how do you see Kenyans 
adopting to that culture change. I mean, we're talking about now maybe carrying kiondos yeah. or whatever other uh, organic or disposable plastic bags that are available. Um, I think one of the people who are most affected, and I had this conversation with a friend of mine, are the people who sell um, at the butcher where they package their meat in, in the plastic bags and then wrap it in the newspapers. Now, number one, they cannot wrap it only in the newspapers because that also was found to be unhygienic. So mm -hmm. the question has been, how exactly am I going to buy my meat where I cannot use the plastic and I can also not use the newspaper, um, the newspaper as well? However, I think um, the issue, just like Evans has pointed out, it is an issue of progressive realization that one, we need to have the law in place. And now we have the law in place. Now, the second phase of it will be how then do we um, make the law to come down to the level of the common Mananchi, where we have mamas back in the village and even in, in our different houses where they have heaps of paper bags where anytime they want to go shopping, they simply pull out one and go to the shop. How do we then make the law to be implementable? Maybe at the county level, at, at, at smaller levels, because now it is a national legislation, so it has to come down to the, to the, to the lower level. But as I said, it's going to take a bit of time because it has to be realized progressively. Mm. So what, one of the things we need to see in the law is, does it have a time frame to say, one, we need to have the law affected by this so that manufacturers stop manufacturing. Then number two, NEMA now has to go on a serious campaign um, at the local level of now um, making the public aware of the alternative measures and then having people embrace that over time. All right, and talking about a culture change, I think one of the things that probably will happen is uh, impulsive buying may reduce because, you know, you walk into a supermarket, you buy something, and you know they'll give you a paper bag, but now when it costs you, to buy it or you do not have the paper bag of course that's likely to change but let's look at something different and this brian is to do with the uh, general public awareness of the environment because when you look at our culture again uh, we are very let me call it uh, irresponsible society when it comes to trashing we throw things and litter all over uh, would this also be an opportunity possibly for NEMA and maybe the government to ensure that we are more aware of what harm we do th to the environment when we litter? Absolutely. Uh, because, uh, uh, as you pointed out, I've had the privilege of visiting these slums like Kibera or Kuru Kwanjenga. And the culture there, the, the, the beans, uh, the litter there is just too much. So we are expecting that now that they have issued a ban on this, they are going to provide the same alternative. Because uh, we have the issues, for instance, in Kibra, we have issues of FTs, if I may say. They call them flying toilets. Yes. Now, that will push the government to actually provide actual latrines for these people. And it is a legislative thing as on different levels, at the national level, at the county level, and at the constituency level, for those leaders to ensure that, okay, fine, we have done away with this, but what is the alternative that we are giving out to our people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, the, 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 the NEMA, the government, and the, re uh, and the citizens have the uh, sole responsibility mm -hmm. of just making sure that the ban Okay, the ban has been affected, but the question remains, will we achieve mm -hmm. what the ban was meant to achieve? Mm -hmm. So it is a joint effort of, that cuts across. Uh, that cuts across. Well, full as yeah, we wind up on that, uh, possibly what you'd like to let Kenyans know, given that Tuesday, if you're caught with one, the fine is very, very hefty. Uh, I think, uh, just again, like uh, my colleagues have said, I think one of the biggest challenges, I think the, the, the introduction and adoption of this law, I think it's been rushed a little bit because... Uh, if you talk about all these people who have the culture problem that all people depend on plastic bags, I think they should have looked at the disposal mechanism of plastic bags so that we have a proper uh, garbage disposal system whereby we can be able to collect plastic materials and dispose them in a way that cannot affect the environment. I think that's what is lacking. Because in many other countries that are developed, I think there's a system whereby you are able to, to use plastic bags, but you, also, you know also how to dispose them. Mm. But, and that's where you can see, like, everywhere you, you walk in this city, you find plastic bags, plastic bottles being thrown anyhowly. And I think that's a huge impact to the environment. But I think if we could, the law would also be able to look at, like, even if the mamamboga is able to use the plastic bag, how do you dispose it at the end of the day? Mm. And how is it collected? And that goes on to, down to uh, garbage collection and disposal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, the, that's where I think and one inch really need to know that probably we really need to adapt this to, to, to as progressive 
adoption of this law so that we are able to minimize then how we are using plastic bags. But I, I know eventually it will take quite a, a long, maybe some time before we, the law is actually realized. And realized and implemented at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. All right. So, well, Monday is D-Day, so make sure that uh, I'd seen a meme that was going around where people were saying to Kutane, Sunday to chome plastic. So I don't know if you're going to be participating in one of those parties where you'll choma plastic, because again, that may also have a negative impact on uh, the environment. But let's, that aside,